and Merry Christmas, everybody. It's the first day of December, and I hope you're getting all excited and ready for Christmas and plan to join us for our Christmas Eve services here at First Baptist. And Christmas Day is on a Sunday, so we will have one worship service that Sunday at 11 a.m. Christmas Eve, two services, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock, so I hope you'll join us, but Merry Christmas. This month, in our Bible reading plan, we're making our way through the book of Revelation. Today, we are in chapter 2, and in this chapter, Jesus delivers his message to four of the seven churches this letter is being written and sent to that we talked about uh, yesterday, and he begins his message to these four churches the same way, with the same phrasing, if you will. Look at verse 1 of chapter 2. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. Then look at verse 8. To the angel of the church in Smyrna, write. Look at verse 12. To the angel of the church in Pergamum, write. And then also in chapter 2 and verse 18, to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write. So he begins the message. He gives to each church the same way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what does he mean when he says to the angel of the church in Ephesus or Thyatira or Smyrna? What does he mean to the angel? Who is that? Well, back in chapter 1, John has this vision of Jesus holding um, 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 seven uh, stars in his right hand, and, and there's these seven lampstands, and he's walking among them. And when you look back in chapter 1 um, in, at, uh, at verse 20, as for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, okay, and that would be his hand of authority, the seven uh, in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And it's this picture of Jesus walking among the churches, and in his hand, uh, under his authority, the stars who are the angels, i.e. the pastors. And he delivers the message to these seven churches to the pastor. So he says, to the angel, to the pastor of the church in Ephesus, right. And the pastor is to deliver that message to the church. And that image John had back in chapter 1, up in verse 16 of chapter 1, in his right hand he held the seven stars, which are the seven angels or the pastors, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And it's not a coincidence that the stars, the angels in his hand, are mentioned in conjunction with the double-edged sword coming out of his mouth because the primary duty function of a pastor-preacher is to teach and preach God's authoritative word, to, to protect God's people from wolves and, and from false teaching and from false thinking, uh, to strengthen God's people, to correct God's people, to encourage, to admonish God's people. The Apostle Paul, <clears throat> excuse me, in chapter 4, verse 2 uh, of his letter to Timothy, his second letter to Timothy, said, Preach the word, be ready, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. The duty of a pastor Preacher is to teach and preach God's word, to protect, to help, to correct, to admonish, to strengthen God's people. And, and that means teaching truth versus falsehood. The, what a pastor does or does not do, what he teaches or does not teach matters. The teaching, preaching ministry of a pastor, preacher is central to the health of God's people and a church. Truth versus falsehood. Being bold with kindness versus being kind and compromising so everybody likes you. Being biblical versus cultural. Preaching God's word rather than the ideology of any group, whether it's to the left or right. And there's one more biblical principle. Um, Paul makes this clear 
that pastors are to teach others who can then teach others who can then teach others. There's a multiplication principle in Scripture when it comes to teaching God's Word. Teach it in such a way that others can turn around and do the same thing, and then they can turn around and do the same thing. It multiplies. That's, that's at the heart. That's at the core of our deep group ministry here at First Baptist Church so that we've designed this process so that 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 people are able to take their experience with God's Word, then turn around and, and lead others through the same experience, and it multiplies. The, um, and I think that's a, a beautiful, powerful thing. Now, one last thing here. In, in these... In Jesus' message to these four churches in chapter 2, he, he begins by saying to each of them, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, Smyrna, Thyatira, Pergamon, all of that. But then what he says to each of them is different. Why? Because each church was unique, and he was able to give a unique message to them. We're going to uh, talk more about that tomorrow, and I look forward to being with you then.